Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this week's video. I've had a lot of subscribers ask me who I watch on YouTube. So I thought this would be a perfect way to introduce some of my favorite YouTube creators. All of us creators need inspiration from time to time. We'll get it from Pinterest. We get it from other YouTube creators. So I want to this week show you six Christmas DIYs that have been inspired by my favorite YouTube creators. So let's go ahead and get started. start with unicorn dust designs i haven't been watching sammy very long but i'm loving her channel she's super funny and she does several videos every week a couple weeks ago she did a thrift flip where she did a transfer inside a frame and y'all know my frame stash is ridiculous so i thought that i would do the same thing so i have just taken a gold frame and some cardstock i'm cutting it down to the size of the frame. In Sammy's video, she used drop cloth, I believe, but I had this old chenille type bedspread that was just worn out and had holes all in it. So I'm using what I can of it because it is a really beautiful color and has some nice texture to it. I'm just using regular school glue to glue the bedspread material onto my cardstock backing. And then I am going to take the um, black tail in transfer from um, this year's um, holiday transfer from iod you do have to rub a bit more to put transfers onto fabric but you just have to be patient and you have to just keep rubbing until it releases and also on fabric you really want to burnish it good especially if it's one that has a lot of texture like this because it will lift up on the edges and then I'm just going to hot glue this one back in the frame. And that is that, that is that easy. And now I have one less frame in my stash. While I'm at it, I have this embroidery hoop, so I decided to go ahead and do another transfer from the Christmas Valley Transfer Pack, the cute little truck with the trees in it. That's so easy, you rub it on the fabric, stick it back in the embroidery hoop, cut off the excess fabric on the back, and this artwork is done. All the artwork I do in embroidery hoop sells really quick. I may go back and put some words on this under the truck, I haven't decided just yet. And also, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and get rid of another frame in my stash. I have this black frame, so I'm going to put this beautiful cardinal on the same bedspread fabric and stick it in this black frame, and that artwork is done also. I love doing the transfers in frames. They sell really well, so thanks, Sammy, for all your inspiration. On to our next creator. Julie was one of the first creators I ever saw on YouTube, and I was amazed at how she could transform just about anything into her gorgeous style. She has moved and life has changed a bit now, so nowadays she mostly does shopping and haul videos, but occasionally she still has some amazing flip videos. Last week in a Christmas DIY video, she made these cool paper bags for trees and I knew I wanted to do them as well. So Julie used a larger pickle jar. I just used what I had on hand and put it in the paper bag, roll the paper bag down. And in Julie's video, she used a stamp 
from last year's uh, Christmas release. I did not have any of those, but she mentioned that the crockery stamps were very similar. So I'm gonna use my crockery stamps and I'm going to do it while the bag is, or while the pickle jar is in the bag so I can keep it in the center and making it a rounded surface. I'm gonna use black IOD ink, just stamp it on the stamp and then rub it on to the paper bag. This black ink comes out really good on the paper bag. Julie used red, and I'm gonna do some of those as well. I forgot how much I love these crockery stamps, so it was so fun to get to use them again. And then I'm just going to embellish the paper bag with some twine and stick some greenery in this one. I also have a quart jar that's a little bit taller. Um, for this one, and Julie had a taller jar as well, I'm going to put it in the paper bag, but instead of rolling it down, I'm going to put a rubber band around the top and then just push the excess bag down in it. And I did notice that the greenery stood up straighter in this one too because of the bag in there. And then we're just gonna hide the rubber band with some twine and tie it off. We're gonna put another crockery stamp with black ink on this one. And I also have a stamp set that I have not been able to use yet this year. It's the Heavenly Stamps. So I thought that I would try one with it too. Anytime you're using your stamps for the first time, you want to um, use a little bit of sandpaper on them. I'm going to be using the only one that would fit on here and I am going to be using the red ink on just another quart jar. And the red shows up really great on this paper bag too. This one is just beautiful. I love all these angels. I can't wait to come up with some more DIYs using these stamps. I will link Julie's video below in the description and all of the videos where these creators have done these DIYs that have inspired me today. Another creator that inspires me so much is Upcycled by Brie. Her style is very farmhouse, industrial, primitive, and I love it. A couple weeks ago, she put some inexpensive trees into different wood, and it completely changed the look and made them look so much more expensive looking. So right off the top of my head, I thought of several things that I already had in my stash that I thought we could work with. Um, I have a basket, I have the bottom of a couch, and I have a doorknob, which Brie did in a live video. And also I found this little mini cheese grater. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the uh, bottom leg that came off a couch before it went to the dump, and I'm going to paint it white. I'm going to use the Rethunk Junk paint. I believe this is the color cotton. This is a resin paint. It has a built-in sealer and it's self-leveling. I always think I want to go back and distress this, but when I get the paint on here, it always looks so beautiful that I hate to distress this paint. So once I get it all painted up and it's dried, I just drilled a hole in the top of it. I put some hot glue down in the hole, then stuck this really inexpensive tree that I've had in it fluffed it out, and I think it looks so cute now. I also have this little wooden candlestick. It was a single, didn't have any match, so I knew there was something I could do with it. I wanted to give it a little bit more stability on the bottom, and I had some of these wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. It's I don't want to paint it, and I kind of want it to match the color of the candlestick a little more. So I'm going to use some DIY Dark and Decrepit. Um, it's a stain, sort of. 
I think they call it a liquid patina. So I'm just gonna put this all over the wood round and then go over the candlestick too so that their colors match. To put them together, I'm just going to use a mixture of hot glue and tight bond glue after I drill a hole into the top of the candlestick to stick my tree in it. So now we have another inexpensive tree that looks so much better now. I had this rusty, crusty doorknob, and like I said, Bree did a live where she put several just little tree branches down inside of some antique doorknobs. I took the screw out to take the long piece out, and then I had to push the bottle brush tree down some and of course it's glitter so there's glitter everywhere i put the screw back in to give my hot glue something to grab to and then i just put a lot of hot glue down in the doorknob and stuck the tree in it i wish i had more of these and i wish i had some that weren't so rounded on the bottom because this one didn't stand up great for the little cheese grater it doesn't look it but it's actually green so i just stuck some christmas stems in it and it's just so cute now and then this basket fit a bottle brush tree that I had perfectly so thanks for the inspiration Brie and I love sticking a tree in it <music> Y'all have got to go check out Teresa from Our Green Acres after this video. She is in Alabama just like me. Her style is very French country, shabby chic, and she can take anything and turn it into something beautiful. A couple of weeks ago, she upcycled a thrift store purse into something amazing, and I wanted to do it too. Um, Teresa found a black leather type purse and spray painted it white. I actually found a purse that I like just like it was, so I'm not gonna paint it. It's kind of like this whisk wicker. The hardest part is going through the transfer pack and finding something that I wanted to use. I did finally settle on this swag. The colors went really well with the purse and this, like I said, this is a wicker type material, so it come off of the transfer super easy with all the texture. So I just put it on and then burnished it really well with the transfer backing to make sure that it was stuck down really well. Once I got the swag on there, I decided I wanted to do a bird. So I also put a bird on this little bag and I just love the way it turned out with some Christmas greenery in it. You can, the thing I love about Teresa also is she really thinks outside the box in what you can use to decorate. Things you would never think of as decoration, she can do it.
I also found this cute little black pocketbook for 99 cents at the thrift store. And I'm gonna put one of these transfers from the traditional pots on it. It ha They have black and white and blue. So I just took a white one and put it on this little pocketbook. And I just love how this one turns out. It's so dainty looking and looks really great for Christmas or whatever season of floral you want to put in it. Next up, we have Sonnet's Garden Blooms. Y'all, I don't know how she does it all. Sonnet has three booths. She does craft shows. She does a couple of videos a week and Facebook Live. I love her creativity and all her use of colors. Sonnet made some scrap wood snowmen a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to do my own version. Of course, I always save all my wood, too, and these are just some old fence boards that were never used. I am going to tape it off and paint the top half of each of them black and the bottom half of each of them white. We are going to make the four snowmen. I decided I would keep the fence top up top instead of cutting it off straight. I also cut out um, just some little strips of wood to make the hat brims and I'm going to paint them black as well. I got all four of the boards painted I needed to seal them in since I used the chalk paint I'm just going to use a Dixie Belle clear coat be sure when you are doing this that you use one brush for the black and one brush for the white or you will get some black in with your white because this uh, clear coat will reactivate it for just a minute and also especially when you're using the black don't dip it into your paint because then you'll get a little bit of black residue in with your clear coat. Then once the clear coat is dry, I'm going to put it all together with my new toy. Y'all, I've been wanting one of these for so long. In the past, when I've wanted to use a nail gun, I've had to go to the shop and use the air gun. And this is just so much more easy to just grab if I need to stick a few brad nails in something. So I put the snowman together with the brad nailer. I put the brims on first, and then I staggered them and brad nailed them together.
all together. I'm going to stamp the word snow on there. Um, Sonnet used the typesetting stamp, which I love, but I use it all the time. So I thought that I would use the farmhand stamp here. And I got a little stamp happy and totally forgot about the snowman's face. So I didn't stamp the letters low enough to have room to put the snowman face. Now, it would be pretty easy right now to go back and cover it up with white and start over, but I decided to just go with it and not do the snowman face for this time. I can always go back later and add it, but I thought that it was very obvious these were snowmen, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the letters on and finish up. In her video, Sonnet mentioned that she might go at, back and add some snowflakes to the hat. I thought they needed a little bit something too, and I already had these resin molds made up from a previous video. If you're interested in how I poured these, go back and watch the video where I made handmade ornaments. These are from the Holly Lane mold. Um, I'm just gonna paint the leaves green and the berries red and then I'm going to add some antiquing wax to darken them up some and one last step that I just love and think it gave so much detail I'm going to take some of the antique gold rub and buff and just highlight some of the areas on the molds and then simply glue them on to the snowman hat and this project is done. I absolutely love how it turned out. It's cute. It stands up on its own. I want to know y'all's honest opinion, though, when you look at the finished product. Do you think that I should have done the snowman face, went back and done it? I do think I'm going to leave this one as is and try to sell it as is. But when I make more, I will definitely do the snowman face. Last but not least is Canterbury Cottage. Oh my goodness, y'all. Sherry inspires me on the regular. She is so stinking creative, especially with her smalls. Recently in a video, she made these adorable little snowman ornaments from blocks. And I happened to have a giant bag full of blocks, so I wanted to give it a shot. I glued the blocks together, kind of staggering them, and I used a mixture of hot glue for instant hold and tight bond for permanent hold. You can place the blocks where the letters aren't showing, where they're facing up, but I kind of like the idea of the letters showing. Next, I drilled a hole in the top of the blocks, and I put just a little bit of hot glue on the end of some thread and then stuck it down in the hole with hot glue as well. I'm hoping that'll hold. I could not find any instant super glue, but I've carried these around for a while and they seem to be holding up pretty well. I'm just going 
going to paint the snowman faces on. I used a little bit of orange paint for the carrot nose, and then I used a black Sharpie paint pen for the eyes and the mouth and the little buttons. And then I gave each of them some rosy cheeks with some pink paint. Now I had an old sweater that had a hole in it or a grease stain or something on it. Actually, it was a flannel shirt. I just cut it up into a lot of pieces, made some scarves, a hat, a skirt, and a belt, and just kind of dressed these guys up in coordinating colors. And finally, for the arms of the snowman, I went outside and just gathered a few little twigs. I'm going to drill diagonally down in the, the middle block of the snowman and hot glue the stick in with just a dab of hot glue. Look how precious these are. I'm obsessed with the little handmade snowmen from Blocks Ornaments. I'll stick these in the booth and hopefully they will sell. And I'm also going to make me some more for my tree. I really hope that y'all have enjoyed this video and all these DIYs that were inspired by my favorite YouTube creators. Don't forget, if you don't already follow their channels, go check them out. I'll link them all below. I hope y'all have a great week and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.